Welcome to the X Corner. I'm here to add a little mutation to the superhero crew. I'll be covering the X Comics for the week of March 14th, 2018. This week we have five comics, All New Wolverine 32, Astonishing X-Men number 9, Old Man Logan 36, Weapon X 15, and X-Men Blue 23. Just note there is a New Mutants Dead Souls miniseries, but I'm going to wait till the whole thing is out to do a special episode on that. And there will be spoilers. Yeah, of course. We'll start with All New Wolverine 32. The writer's Tom Taylor, the penciler's Jijibril Morissette fan. This issue has the first of the Orphan X Revenge stories we were promised after that storyline. Laura is helping Amber get revenge after Laura, as a child, killed Amber's father, who was a Secret Service agent protecting a presidential candidate. The candidate was killed on orders from a tobacco lobbyist slash neo-Nazi, who escaped to Resort Island afterwards. Laura and Amber go to the island to bring him to justice. After Amber seems to be caught, Laura and her turn the tides on evil and bring the old man out in a suitcase to face justice in the U.S. I expected a much different story, but Tom Taylor writes with a little sly grin that I like. When Laura finally agrees to let Amber come, she tells her to pack her Nazi stomping boots. Later that pays off as Amber actually packed Nazi stomping boots, which she shared with Laura to get some revenge for both their lost childhoods. A nice short story before the old woman Laura arc next time, which seems to be capping off the series since a new X-23 book was just announced, probably to let Wolverine take his moniker back. The only downside to this story was no Gabby. Rating, 8 out of 10. Then there's Astonishing X-Men number 9, writers Charles Soule and the pencilers Matteo Buffegni. So Proteus left X and Psylocke in a mindstorm last issue. Archangel realizes that Proteus is weak to metal, so he and Logan go in to save them. Archangel saves Psylocke and wraps his metal wings around her to protect her, but Logan takes a different approach. He believes that since X took Phantom X's body, he'll have his healing factor, so he stabs him. Turns out that X just reconstructed the body from Phantom X, so no healing factor. Once on the Blackbird, X is being tended to by the sick bay, and Bishop tells Psylocke about the prophesized mind killer war, and all signs point to this being the beginning. Meanwhile in Scotland, Proteus has taken over a town by promising the people everything they ever wanted, and he builds a wall around it. X wakes up and knows what Proteus is planning. He wants to bring the astral plane to Earth, which would be bad. Charles Soule continues to write a good yarn with a bunch of characters I'm not that crazy about. The art has taken a dip, but that is to be expected with Marvel books nowadays. The art is definitely not the focus anymore. I'm interested to see where this goes, and the idea that Bishop has been off saving the future over and over again is neat. A solid X book to be sure. The rest of that X team though get very few moments, and some do get lost in the group, so I hope they juggle that a bit better in the future. Rating 7 out of 10. Then there's Old Man Logan 36, the writer's Ed Brisson, and the penciler's Talibor Talajik. So Logan is back in New York, and just found out that Kingpin is mayor. I guess that happened in Daredevil. Logan is approached by a man who says he has a drive that will take down Kingpin, but there's the goons after him, and he needs Logan to protect him. Unfortunately, the drive is encrypted, but the guy knows that Kingpin guarded the thing with his life, so it must be important. Logan reluctantly agrees, but the guy is shot, and Logan is on the run with the drive. Kingpin is twisting the events to make it look like Logan was the crazed vigilante, and Logan is bleeding profusely since his healing factor is failing. Also, to make matters worse, Bullseye is being sent to get the drive back. At least it isn't a crossover. At least not yet. I expect Logan to meet up with Daredevil or Punisher at some point, but as long as it's all in his book, I'm okay with that. I hope I'm wrong, but what's on the drive seems obvious. Because we know Logan can't end Kingpin as mayor, that's Daredevil's job. So it has to be something important to Kingpin, but not against him. I assume it's pictures or videos of a dead loved one. We'll see. I'm not a big fan of Wolverine back in New York. I liked him better in the east or even out west of the US. Also, Logan vs. Bullseye seems to be a dead end. Unless that's how they end, old man Logan. Otherwise, we know that neither will be hurt. This series seems to be petering out with Logan's healing factor. And I don't think either are long for this world. Old Man Logan was a substitute for the real Wolverine, and now that he's coming back, the old man is on life support. I hope they'll just let him retire to a cabin in the woods, but comics usually like to type stories like this permanently, so we'll see. Rating, 6 out of 10. Here's the big one, Weapon X-15, the writer's Greg Pak, and Fred Van Lante. Penciler's Roland Bashi. 
So here we go. I literally wanted to say, nope, I'm out and be done with this series. But something told me this might be okay. Written by Greg Pak and Fred Van Lente. I think Marvel realized Pak needed some help. And Van Lente did help indeed. So the rest of the Weapon X team went on vacation, so Old Man Logan was left on the ship alone. An alarm goes off and he realizes it's his birthday. And then Sabretooth attacks. Sabretooth has been attacking Wolverine on his birthday since forever, as seen by the splash page. Wolverine keeps telling Sabretooth to back down, but Sabretooth thinks he's just being scared. It turns out though that when Logan killed the future Sabretooth, it sent him over the edge into a berserker rage that resulted in him killing all the X-Men. Mumo, during their fight, the ship has been damaged and it crashes into what looks like a prison for monsters. Wherever the ship was from, that's what its job was, to hunt down and contain monsters. So I guess for some reason it crashed there. Sabretooth is excited when he sees all the monsters, but ecstatic when Logan bursts out of the crash in a berserker rage. So the added storytelling in this issue helped it not just to be a big fight, which it still was. And the next issue looks to be the same. I think we get that Pack likes to write just fighting. Not much characterization. That is where Van Lenti comes in, I'm sure. The art was good, and it earned the book a reprieve for another month. It's like an abusive relationship. Just can't walk away. 6 out of 10. Lastly, we have X-Men Blue 23. The writer's Cullen Bunn, and the penciler's Jorge Molina. Now this is an interesting turn of events. So the young, time-displaced X-Men stuck off in crossover hell in space. Magneto is back on Earth, running a black ops team. He sends Bloodstorm and Jimmy off to reconnoiter a gathering of mutants from Jimmy's reality, only to find Zorn involved with them. The Raksha Mandraport ninja team has come to Magneto to warn him about Hellfire Club activity. Magneto is off to confront Sebastian Shaw, who now has a secondary mutation allowing him to absorb kinetic energy from the air around him. Meanwhile, Havoc, still evil and working with Emma Frost, has teamed up with Bastion to shut down a sentinel factory. Bastion wants the mutants to survive so that he can continue to hunt them knowing that if they die off, you'll be out of a job. Once that's done, the two join Emma and Miss Sinister to have an evil planning session around a glowing globe. As you do. They plan to release something called Mother Vine to activate the mutant gene worldwide and quadruple the mutants on Earth overnight, and eventually eliminate the humans. Then back at Magneto's base, Polaris is left to babysit the Raksha when she finds a strange necklace. It turns out to be malice in it, and now she's back to being bad. What a thematic shift. When I saw Polaris and Havoc, I thought a reunion was in the cards, but not like this. My only hope is that by the end they both are good again. I'm a huge Havoc fanboy, and have had to suffer through this evil period. Another interesting twist was that at the evil planning session, it was Emma who wasn't 100% on board. When she's the least evil person in the room, you know you've got a problem. The only downside of this comic is that it isn't its own series. I'd have loved to see Magneto as a head of a shadowy organization, opposed to the axis of evil mutants. I just hope the young X-Men don't come back too soon and ruin all the fun. Rating, 9 out of 10. So another week in the books. Some surprises and quite a few good comics. That X-Men Blue is very good. It's my must read for the week. It should have been like Shadow X number 1. I'm still thinking about the possibilities. Let's hope they don't waste it like so many other good ideas in the past. Uh, next week I'll be at Adepticon. Check Family of Gamer 777 if you don't know what that is. But in two weeks, we'll have a double-sized spectacular. See you then.